Excuse me, sir, but do you know how fast you were going? Oh, a physics question. All right, I like it. Okay, now are we talking speed or velocity? What? Speed or velocity? I mean, like, do we care about direction, where I started, where I'm ended up, where I'm going? What? No, I don't care about where you're going. Oh, okay, okay, we're talking speed then. Now, speed relative to what? Huh? Well, relative to other cars, I've probably been only going 10, 20 kilometers per hour. But relative to the sun, it's been like 107,000 kilometers per hour. But relative to the car, and I've been in the whole time, it'd probably just be zero, which I'm pretty sure isn't illegal. Okay, you know what? Stop, stop, stop. Okay, how fast were you going in your car relative to the ground one minute ago when I pulled you over? What unit are we talking? Okay, get out of the car. You're under arrest. All right, welcome back Physics 20s to our next lesson where we are studying velocity and trying to figure out the question, how fast are you going? All right, so first to look at the difference between velocity and speed, kind of similar to distance and displacement we talked about before. One's gonna be a vector and one's gonna be a scalar. Okay, so speed is the first one I'll introduce. It is a scalar, again, meaning that we are just considering the magnitude we're not worried about the direction. It uses the other scalar value we talked about for distance. We're just gonna take that distance now divided by time. So how far you go and in how much time tells us how fast we're going. Velocity is very similar, but it is again the vector quantity. So we're gonna use the other vector quantity of displacement divided by time. So overall our change of position divided by our time. Okay, so there can be some complex scenarios where we're talking about velocity, but we're going to start with the easiest one, which is uniform motion. Okay, uniform motion means talking about a constant velocity. Remember, velocity is our vector term, so we're saying a constant how fast or constant speed, but also a constant direction. So we're going one speed in one direction. Okay, and when that's occurring, we get this formula of V is equal to D over T. And this equation will always be used for uniform motion. It's the only equation we'll use for uniform motion. Okay, what does it mean? The V represents velocity, as you may have guessed. The D represents the displacement, and D represents time, as we showed on the previous slide. Now, just looking for what the units could be. Displacement could be measured in meters, time in seconds. So then meters divided by seconds, we'd have our velocity in meters per second. However, equally good, you could have your displacement measured in kilometers, and then the time is usually measured in hours, and you could have your velocity measured in kilometers per hour. Okay, so looking at the first example here, it says Google estimates that it will take 18 minutes to drive 20 kilometers to work with the period there. How fast does Google estimate your car will drive? Okay. Now, a little bit of a caution off the start here. Normally, when you type into Google Maps how long to get there, you're not going to be in uniform motion because sometimes you're going in town where it's going slower. Sometimes you're on the highway when it's going faster. Sometimes you're stopped at a light. So I'll be honest, it's not the best example of often when someone's going in uniform motion. But for this example, let's say that you're in uniform motion. Work is on a straight line down a highway where you can travel at one speed. I know it's not realistic, but we'll talk about how this scenario applies to changes in velocity a bit later on in the course. But today, let's imagine you're gonna go one speed to work as we are talking about uniform motion in this question or in this lesson. Okay, so if it's uniform motion, we can use V is equal to D over T. Okay, we're gonna plug in a distance of 20 kilometers divided by our time but then when I look at my time, I have 18 minutes. If I divide by 18 minutes, I'm gonna get kilometers per minute, which is not a common unit for velocity. We should do kilometers per hour or meters per second. Easiest here, I think, is to do kilometers per hour. So let's just convert 18 minutes into hours. There's 60 minutes in an hour, so I have 18 out of those 60. 18 60ths of an hour, we'll just divide them, we can get 0.3 hours. So plug in our 0 0.3 hours, we're going at 67 kilometers per hour. Again, not the most realistic example. Work is in a straight line. If you go at 67 kilometers per hour, you'll get there in 18 minutes. We'll kind of revisit these examples and what that could mean later on when we talk about acceleration. 
Let's take a look for solving a different variable. This one says while driving at 100 kilometers per hour, this one we're saying the whole time, 100 kilometers per hour, you see a sign that says 42 kilometers. You're going down the highway and 42 kilometers is gonna be your destination. Imagine you go 100 kilometers, kilometers per hour the whole time. How long will it take, this is asking for the time, to arrive at your destination? So if we're saying this is uniform motion, constant velocity, we'll use V is equal to D over T. Now this is one of the harder rearrangements because we have to solve for T and we notice that T is in the bottom. Whenever what you're rearranging for is in the bottom, my advice would be to get it out of the bottom because otherwise you're gonna end up with one over T and that's gonna be complex to use at the end. So let's get out of the bottom right away by multiplying by time, cancels out over here, and we have T times V is equal to D. Now we're not done yet, we haven't got time by itself, but at least it's out of the bottom. And we got the time up here. Now it's being multiplied by velocity, so let's just divide by V, put a V under here, and we have our new equation of time is our displacement divided by our velocity. So let's go 42 kilometers, divide by 100 kilometers per hour. Our units look good here, we're gonna have kilometers canceling out, and we can answer of 0.42 hours. Not often that when it's less than an hour we talk about uh, decimals of an hour. So we should probably turn this into minutes. So similar to what we had last time, there's 60 minutes in an hour. So 0 0.42 of an hour times 60, uh, this should give us an answer that rounds to 25 minutes till you reach your destination. And here the last scenario solving for displacement, a driver is traveling at 55 kilometers per hour. If that is a constant velocity, a constant speed and direction, we can use our equation V is equal to D over T. It says in this case, they look down at their phone for two seconds. How far do they travel while not looking at the road? Okay, they look down for just two seconds. How far are they gonna go while they're looking down? Okay, so if it's is staying at 55 kilometers per hour, V is equal to D over T, we're trying to solve for D. So not too bad a rearrangement here, similar to the last one, times by T, and then we're already done at that point. We have time multiplied by velocity gives us our displacement. Okay, so now we'll take 55 kilometers per hour times two seconds, wait a second, when we notice here that we have kilometers, hours, seconds, these are not the same units, this isn't gonna work out. I have my time here in hours and this one in seconds. So in this case, what I would do is I'm gonna convert this kilometers per hour into that other unit we saw for velocity of meters per second. You could say turn seconds into hours, but it's common that physics questions need meters per second. We'll see that later when we do acceleration as well. So we need to know that scale of turning kilometers per hour into meters per second. It's a little bit complex, but what we have to do is kilometers to meters is times by a thousand, because there's a thousand kilometers in a meter. And then hours into seconds, we have to divide by 60 to get to minutes, and then 60 again to get to seconds. And I know that sounds complex, but it's times by 1,000 divided by 3,600. There's a simpler thing just to remember is that all we have to do is divide by 3.6. That makes it just a simpler conversion. So you can memorize that. Um, if you want to remember the process of, okay, times by 1,000 to meters, divide by 60, divide by 60, that works as well. Uh, but 3.6 is hopefully not too bad to remember. So 55 divided by 3.6, they're going at 15.278 meters per second. So now I have meters per second times seconds. We're gonna cancel those seconds. I should get an answer in meters. I mean, an answer of 30.556, that's 31 meters. That's a big distance, 31 meters. Think of a meter stick and then 31 of those lined up. Lots of things could happen in that distance and they're not even gonna see what's gonna happen until they look up. Even if they look up at that point and see something, they're still not gonna be able to react in time even if it's a few more meters. So what this question is trying to emphasize is please, please do not look at your phone while you're driving at all, not even for a second or two. So as much as it's good to know the calculations and stuff here, I always wanna to emphasize to my students this is the most important part, how this affects your life and your safety, and I encourage you never to look at your phone and not be a distracted driver. So this brings us to the last part of the video that is talking about relative motion, when things are moving relative to each other. As mentioned in the intro of the video, it can be kind of tough to understand. It means your velocity compared to another object. We'll say relative to another object. So to kind of make sense of this, I'm gonna use the example of a river here. 
okay? So initially, you know, let's actually not call this a river off the start. Let's just call it a lake where the water's not moving. So I've put this like light color here to represent the water, this light blue, and the grid is supposed to represent how the water's moving. So right now the water's not moving at all. And let's say this person in their boat is going to paddle at three meters per second. Uh, kind of a fast paddle, maybe it's a motorboat, but they're really going at three meters per second. If the water's not moving, they're gonna travel at three meters per second. Since the water stopped, they're going at three meters per second relative to the water. And the ground on the shore is stopped too, so they're going at three meters per second relative to the shore. Okay, not too bad for that one. The next one we're gonna say, actually, let's not paddle at all. We're not gonna uh, engage the motor at all. They're not gonna paddle, they're just gonna float on the water. But this is the case where it's gonna be a river. The river is gonna move, so we're gonna see the grid move that direction at two meters per second. Okay, so once it starts moving like this, you can see they're getting carried by the water in that direction. Their speed relative to the water, if we go back, they don't move compared to those grid lines. So compared to the water, or relative to the water, the boat's velocity is zero. However, relative to the shore, the boat's velocity is two meters per second because it's moving two meters per second by the shore. Okay, so that's how we start to use relative to a little bit differently. Next, we're gonna add the two together. So now we're gonna have the boat's gonna drive or paddle three meters per second this way, and then the river is also gonna flow two meters per second that way. So let's see what that would look like. It would look like this. So I put a gray boat there to show where it started on the water. And I'll show that one more time. The gray boat is staying with the water. So this is kind of like our example from previously. And hopefully you can see now, we've moved forward on the water compared to that last one. We've moved forward compared to the water at three meters per second. If someone else was floating on the water, we'd drive past them at three meters per second. So the boat's velocity relative to the water is three meters per second. Now, the boat's velocity relative to the shore, relative to someone stationary, if someone was standing right over here, I'm gonna put a little, <laughs> a little person over here, standing on the shore, how fast is the boat going by them? Well, they're going at the three meters per second and the two meters per second, they'd be going at five meters per second relative to someone stopped or relative to someone on the shore. We'll start looking at some examples like this a bit later on in chapter two as well. So good to introduce here some relative motion examples. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I hope that helped you to understand how to answer how fast are you going. Uh, so answer some questions with speed and velocity and relative motion. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.